Hello students, good evening to all of you. So students, the first and the foremost thing today that we are going to start would be on this the taxation of dividends, alternate tax regime thereafter and finally settling down with the mat. Very quickly first, let's look upon to this the dividend taxation students. Now these are important particular provisions which are there for your upcoming examination. The first particular point is about the concept of deemed dividend students. So I will try to break it down this dividend students whenever you have to revise this dividend taxation please break it down into two parts. The first part in the dividend taxation has to be the concept of deemed dividend and the special rate of tax applicable if any which is 115 BBD. The second part is about the latest amendments which are being there of the Finance Act 2020. So that Finance Act 2020 latest amendment is the second particular coverage that we will discuss it in this regard. So the first one let's look upon to that in this context is about the deemed dividend concept. Here students in the case of deemed dividend there would be some important aspect which can be targeted in the examination I am going to cover up that first. So if you can have a look over here you find deemed dividend from 222A to 222E. Now students, dividend of 222A to 222E first and foremost is always keep in mind to deal with the dividend of 222A to 222D first. From A to D. And thereafter you go to the next one which is the last one which is a 222E dividend. So, so far as 222A to 222D is concerned, let's have a look to the first one. The first one says about the distribution of the asset of the company to its shareholders. Now this can be as simple as students a normal particular asset which has been distributed to the shareholder which can be also in the form of a cash which means that the normal dividend payout as we all know interim dividend final dividend they all can get covered in this section 222a. The normal dividend in this context like say for example the dividend which is like in the form of interim dividend final dividend they can be covered in this particular context. This is what 222A dividend is all about. Thereafter we have this 222B dividend. Now this is an important one. So supposingly if the company wants to distribute like for example they are distributing their own debentures or they are distributing their own debenture stock to the shareholder. So distribution of their own debenture or distribution of the debenture stock to any shareholder. Now this shareholder students can be equity shareholder or the preference shareholders. This shareholder can be either the equity or it can be a preference shareholder. In both the cases students it will be considered as a deemed dividend and accordingly this deemed dividend would be considered under 222B. Now by the way I think all of you are aware earlier the company used to pay the dividend distribution tax on the dividend so distributed but now these dividend will be chargeable in the hands of the shareholder under their IFOs. These dividend are now going to be charged in the hands of the shareholder under their IFOs. That is what your 222B dividend is all about. Okay. Now the second part of 222B dividend is more critical because now this is talking about the bonus shares which are being given by the company its own bonus shares so company's own bonus shares given by the company to whom so the company's own bonus shares has been given by the company to its preference shareholder to its preference shareholder students so if the company is giving its own bonus shares to its preference shareholder then even that is considered as a deemed dividend under section 222b that is considered as a deemed dividend under section 222b students so that is a dividend of 222B which has been there in this context. Fine and thereafter what about the case wherein the bonus has been given to the equity shareholder whether that would be considered as a deemed dividend of 222B and the answer is no. The bonus which you give it to the equity shareholder is perfectly fine. There is absolutely no eyebrows which get raised if a bonus has been given to the equity shareholder because obviously the equity shareholder primarily bears the ultimate risk and accordingly accordingly it is justifiable on the part of the company to issue its bonus share to the equity shareholder but when a bonus share has been issued to the preference shareholder then that is where the problem will arise and accordingly in this particular case bonus shares being given the company issuing its own bonus shares to its preference shareholder then that will be considered as a deemed dividend under section 222b 
Now, 222C students is an important one. By the way, as I have told you students, that 222A to 222D different. The different of 222A to 222D has to be considered separately in this case. The reason is very clear. If you can have a look over here itself, you will come to know. Students, have a look in this context. That when you talk about 222A to 222D dividend, it becomes very clear that this dividend is the amount that has been distributed is restricted to the extent of the accumulated profits of the company, whether it is capitalized or not. The dividend which has been distributed from 222A to 222D is restricted to the extent of the accumulated profit of the company, whether it is capitalized or not. What do you mean by capitalization of a profit? In this context, any idea of that? The capitalization of profit students. So the capitalization of profit students, as you may be aware of it, that whenever you issue a bonus shares, students, what is the general entry that you pass? Whenever you issue the bonus shares, what is the general entry that you pass? You pass a general entry of reserves and surplus account debit to equity share capital. To equity share capital. So therefore, is this a capitalization of profit? Yes. So in the question, if at all they will give it to you, the data of equity share capital and in that in the bracket they can say that out of the above rupees say for example 5 lakhs is a bonus shares which is issued out of the above rupees 5 lakhs is a bonus shares which is issued so while you compute the accumulated profit for the purpose of considering the amount of dividend under section 222a to 222d while you consider the accumulated profit then in that case such bonus share which is issued even that will be a that even that will be considered as a part of your accumulated profit even that will be considered as a part of your accumulated profit student this is a point that you should be very careful about it okay so this is e this is true for the dividend which you have distributed from 222a to 222d that is a point and the last but not the least is 222d dividend which talks about what distribution by a company made to its shareholder on reduction of its capital. Now, this is a very peculiar thing, isn't it? On reduction of its capital students. So, distribution by a company made, Gayatri, distribution by a company made to its shareholder on its reduction of its capital. Now, students, we all know we have done internal reconstruction in intermediate. In, in, in that, we all are aware that whenever a capital is reduced, it is generally reduced for the purpose of writing off the accumulated losses of the company. Whenever the capital is reduced, it is reduced for the purpose of the for the purpose of students. <coughs> for the purpose of students in this context, uh, writing off the accumulated profit of the company. We haven't seen anything of like where a capital being issued, a capital being issued, and on that. Uh, sorry, a capital the cap the capital being reduced, and on thus uh, and on this reduction, the shareholder are distributed the proportionate amount. The shareholders are distributed the proportionate amount. So that is something, that is something, students. We haven't encountered it at all. That is something that students we haven't encountered it at all. So students, it is very obvious in this regard that. The distribution by a company made to its shareholder on reduction of its capital students. So whenever an attempt is made by the company that when it reduces its share capital, it wants to pay out to its shareholder the proportionate amount, then such payout students will also be considered, such payout will also be considered as a part of your deemed dividend under 222D. 222D. Now here there is some exclusion which is very critical students over here. Now, even a redemption of a preference shares, even a redemption of a preference share or buyback of an equity shares, when you do a buyback of an equity shares, even that leads to, even that leads to what? A reduction of share capital and on which the company makes the payment of money to the shareholder. So, can we therefore say that it could be considered as a case for, can therefore we say that this could also be considered as a case of a deemed dividend of section 222D, can that also be considered as a deemed dividend under section 222D? To that the answer is no. Why? Because there is an exclusion to the dividend. There is an exclusion to the definition of dividend. And in that exclusion, very clearly they have said that 
पेमेंट मेड ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ रिडेम्शन ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स पेमेंट विच इज मेड ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ द रिडेम्शन ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स दैट शेल नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ डीम डिफरेंट रूल दैट शेल नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ डीम डिफरेंट सिमिलरली फॉर पॉइंट नंबर थ्री यू कैन सी दी बाय बैक ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर स्टूडेंट्स दी बाय बैक ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर विच इज डन इवन सच बाय बैक ऑन दैट इफ यू मेक अ पे आउट ऑन दैट बाय बैक इफ यू डू अ पे आउट then such payout also will not be considered such payout will also not be considered as a case of a deemed dividend under section 222 d deemed dividend under section 222 d is that clear so two things students two payout is not to be considered as a deemed dividend under 222 d one is the payout on account of the redemption of preference shares and another is a payout on account of the buyback of the equity share even if in both the cases even if in both the cases it results into it results into what students it results into the reduction of reduction of the share capital i hope that all of you are clear with this one now now the most important and expected question is 222c for your examination one of the most expected question students would be the reduction of the share uh, the 222c dividend first let's read this one out and i will do a case study students you will copy it on this case study and do revise even on the day of the examination this particular case study because in all probability this is the most expected question in your exam and that is of when you see 222c distribution by a company made to its shareholder on liquidation so if the company distribute any money or even an asset doesn't matter so any distribution which the company does to its shareholder at the time of its liquidation then such distribution are also considered as a deemed dividend under section 222c such distribution is also considered as a deemed dividend under section 222c so let's have a look over here students on liquidation of a company students you need to copy it on this one students a case study liquidation of a company so in respect of a liquidation of company students let's see the taxation of dividend and the taxation of the capital gains we'll discuss from the perspective of what will happen in the case of a company and what will happen in the case of a shareholder let's take a particular shareholder mr x the case study of mr x who is a 10% shareholder of the company who is a 10% shareholder of the company now supposingly on liquidation on liquidation the money and the fair market value of the asset distributed to say for example this is rupees 10 lakhs or uh, rupees uh, 20 lakhs okay accumulated profit of the company including the capitalized amount is rupees 8 lakhs accumulated profit of the company including the capital as amount say is rupees 8 lakhs okay so definitely friends how much is the deemed dividend restricted to accumulated profit so deemed dividend under section 222c would be considered as rupees 8 lakhs restricted to the accumulated profit of the company now friends obviously this is what will be distributed or this 10% comes to this 10% comes to rupees a uh, 2 lakhs out of that students how much is a deemed dividend in this context so the deemed dividend under section 222 d is rupees 80000 is rupees 80000 
although the amount distributed will be 2 lakhs to Mr. X being a 10% shareholder, but the deemed dividend out of it under section 222D would be restricted to rupees 80,000. All of you will agree to this one, isn't it? Now, this deemed dividend students will be taxable under the IFOs. Under the IFOs, whether the company which is distributing this deemed dividend, whether the company which is distributing this deemed dividend, will they be liable to deduct TDS under section 194? Whether TDS under section 194 will that be required to be deducted? And the answer is yes. Abhijit, the TDS under section 194 will be required to be deducted on this rupees 8 lakhs which has been distributed. Now, definitely it is more than 5000 in my example. So definitely in this case TDS under 194 will be required to be deducted. So this is a case study as far as, this is a case study students as far as the dividend taxation is concerned. Dividend again I am repeating is going to be taxed only in the hands of the shareholder. Earlier there was a DDT concept, now it is in the hands of the shareholder. Now student, there is a capital gains implication as well. There is a capital gains implication as well that needs to be considered over here. Be careful now. And what is this capital gain implication? Let's have a look to the CG implication. Now what is the CG imp implication over here? Student, the first and the... Okay Abhijit. <laughs> Very good. So the first and the foremost thing, I think this part of CG may not be there for your intermediate. I'm not aware of it. Nevertheless. So CG students, there is a section, section 46.1, which gives the exemption of capital gains in the hands of the company. Please understand the company are transferring their asset. There is a physical transfer of the asset if it take, if that take place wherein the company transfer its asset to its shareholder, then as per 46 subsection 1, it says that the capital asset so transferred will not be considered as a taxable transfer. So accordingly students, in this case, 46 1 says what? The distribution of its asset by the company directly to its shareholder is not considered not considered as a taxable transfer distribution of its asset by the company directly to the shareholder is not considered as a taxable transfer. This is what section 46 subsection 1 is all about. <laughs> Fine. Now students be careful. But what if the company is first selling that asset in the market and the sale proceed is what is distributed to the shareholder? Then whether the capital gains will it be taxable in the hands of the company? And the answer is yes. So if the company is selling that its asset directly in the market and that and the sale proceed arising on such transfer is what is distributed to the shareholder then we will say students that this will now be taxable in the hands of the company this is what will be taxable in the hands of the company so therefore just be careful huh? asset directly to its shareholder this is very important now from the shareholder perspective students here Please be careful. For the shareholder perspective, there is a provision of section 46.2. Now, students, what happens in the case of it? In the case of the liquidation students, we can say even the shareholder ha is was holding the capital asset. Even the shareholder was holding the capital asset, namely the shares of the company. Now, that particular shares of the company on the liquidation, on the liquidation, there would be an extinguishment of its right. There would be an extinguishment of the right. So, in a way, in a way, we can say that even the shareholder right gets extinguished and therefore there is a transfer on the part of the shareholder as well. The fact that the right of the shareholder on the liquidation of the company extinguishes, we will, we can say 
that in that case even the shareholder has transferred has transferred what should it has transferred a capital asset although technically it is incorrect but still for the purpose of understanding that the shareholder has also transferred its asset namely the shares of the company on the liquidation so therefore the capital gains will also emerge now in that case if you see over here we will have to then calculate the capital gains on such transfer by the shareholder of its shares at the time of the liquidation of the company so therefore how the capital gains will be computed on the transfer of such shares this is how it would be so the the money or the asset received money and the fair market value of the asset received by the company by the company that is what would be considered students and the amount in this case is 2 lakhs but out of this 2 lakhs of the amount you cannot tax the entire 2 lakhs of the amount and why is it that you cannot tax the entire 2 lakhs of the amount because out of this rupees 2 lakhs some portion of the amount constitute some portion of the amount students constitute a deemed dividend what is a deemed dividend on this rupees 2 lakhs so this out of some portion so therefore less deemed dividend which is already taxed under section 222c which is already taxed under the head i force so how much is the amount out of this 50000 is already tax under the dai force so therefore balance 1.2 lakhs is the is the full value of consideration under section under section 462 so the balance 1.2 lakhs would be considered to be a full value of consideration under section 462 Now, from this full value of consideration, you reduce the cost of acquisition of the shares. So, say for example, the cost of acquisition, or maybe the I index cost of acquisition, if the period of holding is over a particular point. So, therefore, this can be considered to be the capital gains, which is how much? Rupees eighty thousand. Rupees eighty thousand. so therefore students always keep in mind this particular proposition on the liquidation of the company it is not only the dividend taxation that needs to be considered on the liquidation of the company you need to also look upon the impact or the implication of the capital gains taxation of the capital gains taxation and that is what i say a very comprehensive analysis so this is a comprehensive analysis students which i have given it to all of you now all of you are clear with this students in this context so students now we proceed further so we have dealt with this with that now we come to 222e now this is also an important one students so the two section which i expect in your examination is 222c or 222e from the deemed dividend point of view and that is the reason why they are very important now 222e talks about a loans and advances which has been given by the company to its shareholder so what is that here a closely held company primarily giving loans and advances primarily to a shareholder who is holding so this is a directly a loans and advance which has been given by the company to its shareholder which shareholder who holds not less than 10% of the voting power of the company as on the date when such loans and advances are being made so the minimum threshold or the criteria happens to be 10% of the voting power of the company as on the date when such loans or advances has been given so if supposingly the closely held company is giving the loan and advances to the shareholder be careful students now here you have to be extremely be careful i'll give you one example which the icci has tried to target in one of the attempt let's let me give you an example here supposingly i was a 
फाइव परसेंट फाइव परसेंट शेयर होल्डर इन दैट प्राइवेट कंपनी एज ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर आई वॉज अ फाइव परसेंट शेयर होल्डर ऑफ द कंपनी एज ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर सो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्टूडेंट्स एज ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर विच इज फर्स्ट अप्रैल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फर्स्ट अप्रैल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन आई वॉज हैविंग फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द वोटिंग पावर इन दैट प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी इन द मंथ ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन द कंपनी इज गिविंग मी अ लोन एंड एडवांसेस इन द मंथ ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन द कंपनी इज गिविंग मी अ लोन एंड एडवांसेस एंड इन द मंथ ऑफ जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन आई एम इंक्रीजिंग माई स्टेक इन दैट कंपनी फ्रॉम फाइव परसेंट टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट आई एम इंक्रीजिंग माई स्टेक फ्रॉम फाइव परसेंट टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट क्वेश्चन देर फोर इज द लोन्स एंड एडवांस विच द कंपनी हैज गिवन टू मी इन द मंथ ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन द लोन्स एंड एडवांस विच द कंपनी हैज गिवन टू मी इन द मंथ ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन विल दैट रिजल्ट इन टू अ डीम डिविडेंट अंडर सेक्शन टू ट्वेंटी टू ई टैक्सेबल इन माई हैंड्स विल दैट रिजल्ट इन टू अ डीम डिविडेंट अंडर सेक्शन टू ट्वेंटी टू ई टैक्सेबल इन माई हैंड्स एंड द आंसर इज स्टूडेंट्स नो that will not result into a deemed dividend under section 222e taxable in minds because as on the date of giving the loans and advances as on the date of giving the loans and advances was it was it that i was holding 10% or more of the voting power in that company as on the date of giving the loans and advances was it that i was holding more than 10% of the voting power in that company and the answer is no so what you need to be very careful in 222e very importantly students you need to be very careful that as on the date of giving the loan i should be i as a shareholder should be holding 10% or above voting power in that company 10% or above voting power in that company only then that provision of 222e will be applicable now this is one particular catch point of 222e which you have to be very careful about it the second catch point of this one is that students can you see this one so far as 222a to 222d the dividend which is restricted to the accumulated profit of the company that accumulated profit will be considered inclusive of the capitalized portion of the profit that accumulated profit for the purpose of determining the deemed dividend under section 222a to 222d will it be restricted up to the accumulated profit whether capitalized or not yes but when it comes to the deemed dividend of 222e the capit the capitalized portion of the profit will not form part of the accumulated profit of the company the capitalized portion of the profit will not form part of the accumulated profit of the company this is for 222e so therefore in one of the attempt they were trying to instigate the students by giving this information for 222e question that in the equity share capital rupees 3 lakhs constitute bonus shares which implies nothing but a capitalized profit so are you going to consider it while determining the accumulated profit for the purpose of the dividend calculation of 222e answer is no you will completely ignore this particular data but this data would be relevant had the question would be of calculating the deemed dividend for 222a to 222d that data would be relevant then now therefore students the first case as i was telling to all of you the first case is the case where the company has directly giving the loans and advances to the company to the shareholder which shareholder the shareholder who as on the date of giving such loan should be holding minimum 10% of voting power in that company minimum 10% of the voting power in that company that is point number 1 however instead of giving that loans and advances directly to the company instead of giving the loans and advances directly to the company what they can also do is that they can they can give this loans and advances to a concern they can give the loans and advances to a concern in which such shareholder in which student such shareholder is is having having a substantial interest at any point of time during the previous year now this is very interesting 
so therefore say for example students i am a shareholder of the company holding 12% of the voting power in that company i am the shareholder of that company holding 12% voting power in that private company or a closely held company the closely held company what it does is that it is giving a loans and advances to a partnership firm okay now in that partnership firm at the at the time of giving the loans and advances i was having 10% of profit share i was having 10% of the profit share so at the time of giving the loans and advances to that particular partnership firm i was having 10% of the profit share in that partnership firm however by the end of that previous year my profit share in that partnership firm has increased to 25% my my profit share in that partnership firm has increased to 25% so therefore the question to all of you would be whether the deemed dividend of section 222 e will it be applicable in my hands that is in the hands of the shareholder in this particular example to that the answer is indeed yes students yes it will be applicable students to that the answer indeed will be yes because the reason is that you such shareholder which what do you mean by such shareholder the shareholder which is holding at least 10% of the voting power of the company so such shareholder can have the substantial interest in that concern at any point of time during the previous year such shareholder can have a substantial interest in that particular concern at any point of time during the previous year this is what needs to be considered so students over here if you all see to any concern in which such shareholder is a member or a partner and has a substantial interest which is 20% or above at any time during the previous year that is the point so therefore if the loan has been given to this concern even in that case the deemed dividend of 222e will it be applicable in the hands of the shareholder and the answer is yes which shareholder the shareholder holding 10% or more of the voting power in that particular company as on the date of giving the loan and and holding at least 20% of its share in that concern at any point of time during the previous year not necessarily at the time of giving the loan but always be careful at the time of giving the loan this particular shareholder should be holding at least 10% of the voting power in that company i hope that every one of you are clear with this one and the third one students is this case where that that the closely held company is giving a loans and advances to a person on behalf of on behalf of such shareholder so even even in that particular case the deemed dividend of 222e would be applicable in the hands of the shareholder in the hands of the shareholder and that exactly is the point that exactly is the point now students please be very careful of the fact that even if the loan is a genuine loan even if the loan is a genuine loan 222e will be applicable what does it imply it implies this that supposingly a loan has been given primarily and the shareholder is repaying that loan along with interest still at the time of giving of the loan deemed dividend of 222e will be applicable the deemed dividend of 222e will be applicable irrespective of the fact that subsequently this loan amount has been repaid by the shareholder to the company that is point number 1 and point number 2 students is that be careful point number 2 over here is this that that in the case of advances students in the case of advances if the advance is in the nature of a trade advances if the advance is in the nature of what in the nature of trade advances or a commercial advances then in that case so for example i am a shareholder in that company and the share and the company has appointed me to undertake a works contract to undertake students a works contract in that particular company for which it is giving me the advances for which it is giving me the advances so therefore in that case will the company will deduct tds under section 194 will the company will they deduct tds under 194 or 194c this is the kind of a question you can expect so it the company will not deduct tds under section 194 
for the reason being this is not in the nature a trade advance given to the shareholder will not be considered to be a case of a deemed dividend of 222e so therefore the tds under 194 will not be applicable but the fact that the consideration is paid on account of works contract therefore the company at the time of paying this consideration amount although in the form of an advance at the time of payment the company will be required to deduct the tds under section 194c under section 194c this is a kind of the question students are you getting it how the question will be targeted in the exam so that is all about the deemed dividend we have discussed the second particular point is students is about the special rate of tax be careful students up till last year students there was some special rate of tax on 222e dividend are you aware of that up till last year students there was some special rate of tax on the 222e dividend was 34.94% but today there is no special rate of tax applicable on this particular deemed dividend of 222a to 222e so the shareholder in whose hands this dividend will be taxable the shareholder in whose hands this dividend will be taxable this dividend will be taxable at per the rate applicable to this person the normal rate as per the finance act the normal rate as per the finance act so students there is no special rate which is now applicable for the dividend which is div distributed under 222a to 222e the applicable rate that will be considered for the purpose of taxability in the hands of the recipient shareholder will be will be the rate applicable as per the finance act the rate which is applicable as per the finance act Now coming to the second point, which is very critical, and what is that, students? The special rate of tax in the hands of the dividend income. The special rate of tax in the hands of the dividend income. Now there is only one case is there wherein the dividend is taxed on special rate, which is in section one one five BBD. Now as far as one one five BBD students is concerned, a Indian holding company. getting the dividend from its foreign subsidiary a domestic company in india getting getting what which i will i use the term indian holding company a domestic company in india which i use the term which is the term which i'm using the indian holding company getting the dividend from its foreign subsidiary then in that particular case the dividend income so received the dividend income so received will be taxable the dividend income so received students will it be taxable in the hands of this particular will it be taxable in the hands of the company yes now what is the rate of tax 115 bbd provides for a special rate of tax and the special rate of tax students is 15% now what is this definition of foreign subsidiary the definition of foreign subsidiary is the com the foreign company in which the domestic company holds at least 20 26% of the voting power the for the foreign company in which the domestic company holds at least 26% of the voting power that is what is considered as a foreign subsidiary so if the indian domestic company if they are receiving the dividend from its foreign subsidiary then in that particular case the dividend so received will be charged at a concessional rate of 15% now whenever there is a special rate of tax students whenever there is a special rate of tax then it goes without saying that there will not be any deduction of there will not be any deduction of an expenditure or loss in in the assessment of in the assessment of this for this dividend income so no deduction of any expenditure or loss shall be allowed against this particular dividend amount while doing the assessment under section 115 bbd while doing the assessment under section 115 bbd i hope that all of you are clear with this one if that is the case students we come to one of the most important area and as you can see students is the area students which you all are aware very important one very important one students the two sections which are being there over here 57 and atm the recent changes which has taken place section 57 and then section atm 
now these two section students ICI have used it to its advantage and expect a comprehensive case study number one or expect in the examination question either you expect a comprehensive case study or you expect a total income question specifically the alternate tax regime question alternate tax regime question in which they will give you some data which has to do with section 57 and section ATM now tell me one thing students now 57 as you all are aware that there is one deduction the dividend income which the share which is accessible in the hands of the shareholder in respect of this dividend income only one deduction is available are you aware of that in respect of that dividend income only one deduction is available and that is if I have I say I'm an individual okay and I have taken a borrowing I have taken a loan to acquire the shares of this particular company I have taken a loan to acquire the shares of this particular company then the interest on this particular loan amount will be eligible as deduction the interest on this loan amount will be eligible for deduction but the maximum upper limit is given to you and the upper limit under section 57 students is how much 20 percent of the dividend income so 20 percent of the dividend income happens to be the upper limit 20 percent of the dividend income happens to be the upper limit now then there is also atm which is also equally important now what is this atm that they have mentioned now this is the case where this deduction now this 57 is for any shareholder be careful of students this is for any shareholder any shareholder this is for students a domestic company now be careful students here because there could be a confusion many a times so there are three special special provision which are there so one I will write 115 BBD and another I will write ATM 115 BBD and ATM is applicable only for domestic company only for domestic company whereas section 57 students is deduction for any shareholder is the deduction for any shareholder so this is how the things has to be looked upon in this context students now okay keep this observation in mind so at that reason why deliberately I gave you the example wherein I have taken a loan I means the individual has taken a loan for acquiring the shares of a company then the dividend income will be accessible in my hands under the entire force under the entire force now while it will be accessible in my hands under the entire force will tell me one thing the dividend income in this case will it be taxable at special rate in my hand on normal rate normal rate in my hands it will be taxable as per the normal rate and if it is going to be taxed as per the normal rate the interest expenditure the interest expenditure students will that be allowed as deduction the interest expenditure will that be allowed as deduction students to that the answer is yes the interest expenditure students will be allowed as deduction in this regard so this is how it has to be considered in this context the interest expenditure on the loan which I have taken will that be allowed as deduction to that the answer is yes fine because the dividend is taxable in my hands at the normal rate but what if students be careful now what if i am a foreign company okay now what if i'm a domestic company and if i'm a domestic company and i have taken a loan i have taken a loan students i have taken a loan and on that loan students be careful on that loan primarily i am incurring interest expenditure and I am receiving, receiving what? Receiving a dividend income from another domestic company. I am receiving a dividend income from another domestic company. So whether that interest expenditure on this loan amount, interest expenditure on this loan amount, will that be allowed as deduction? Will that be allowed as deduction? Answer is yes. Why? Because the dividend income again 
is accessible in my hands as per the normal rate applicable to me i am a company so therefore in that situation students the dividend the expenditure the interest expenditure under section 57 that a deduction would be available to me however be careful students if i have opted for an alternate tax regime if i have opted for an alternate tax regime then this particular interest expenditure will not be allowed as deduction then this particular interest expenditure will not be allowed as deduction students this is one thing which is very categorical which is there in 115 bab if you remember 115 bab alternate tax under 115 bab i'll be will show it we'll do that one students may i in fact try to if we have the alternate tax regime i'll just try to give a quick let's do a quick peep to this provision in alternate tax regime this is a very important stage that you all are in students let's have a look so there are two alternate tax rate students one is 115 bab Another one on for B double A. Read this particular part. So what did say, students? Over here, the rate of tax on the income, on the other income, in respect of which there is no specific rate of tax, in respect of which students there is no specific rate of tax. So that is what they have said it in this context. So rate of tax on other income. in respect of which no specific rate of tax is provided so that is what is the example which i give it to all of you right now that is what is the example which i have given to you right now that dividend income received by a domestic company there is no special rate of tax so whatever is the rate of tax was applicable as per the normal rate now if i have opted for 115 bab students be careful on this one if i have opted for 115 bab then this is a point then on this particular income that is a dividend income applicable rate would be 22% plus flat 10% plus flat hec of 4% so effective rate becomes 25.168% so the applicable tax rate would be 25.168% if such income has neither been derived from nor is incidental to manufacturing or production of an article so obviously dividend income is neither an Manif neither a ma income which is derived from manufacturing activity, 
nor we can say that that this dividend income is incidental to this manufacturing activity so neither derived nor incidental that is what we can say isn't it now what they are saying over here in respect of such income no deduction or allowance in respect of any expenditure or allowance shall be allowed in computing such income no deduction should be careful in respect of such income no deduction or allowance in respect of any expenditure or allowance shall be allowed in computing such income so therefore can i say under 57 deduction if a domestic company which is a manufacturing company and has opted for 115 eab if that domestic company has taken a loan loan for which it has used this loan amount to purchase the shares of another company okay now this dividend income which i'm getting it now can i claim a deduction under section 57 if i have opted for 115 bab and the answer is no i will not be in a position to claim the deduction of section 57 if i have opted for 115 bab but what if it is a case of 115 bba then the rate is the same 25.168% the rate is the same 25.168% but is there any restriction so far as a deduction is concerned so what is that they have written there is however no restriction regarding claim of any deduction or allowance permissible under the relevant provision of the act which means that if you have opted for 115 bba then the deduction is allowed to you that is a point that is a point in this context what if students if you are an individual then if you are an individual supposing that is the first example i give it to you if i am an individual now individual all of you are aware that there is 115 bac individual all of you are aware that there is 115 bac now if i have taken a loan amount now this is a very important stage you people are in so if i have taken a loan amount and that loan amount students i am using this loan amount for the purpose of purchase of a shares of another company and i am getting the dividend income from that company i am getting a dividend income of that company and correspondingly there is an interest expenditure now i as an individual have opted for 115 bac i as an individual have opted for 115 bac so whether there would be any restriction students whether there would be any restriction in this case of the deduction of such interest expenditure under section 57 so in 115 bac there is a restriction there is a restriction for claiming some deduction under section 57 but that restriction does not extends to the interest expenditure out of a loan which is taken for the purpose of purchase of security and that is the reason why students for 115 bac case the deduction of this interest expenditure will be allowed so students please take a note of this very important findings because this is what the ici does and this is where you people falter big time i'm telling you students big time you people falter are you aware of that i hope that you all understand the impact of these kind of a discussions now so therefore students all of you will take a note of this particular aspect quickly please take a note of it interest deduction under section 57 in various situation so individual and hf as a shareholder so 115 bac he has taken or 115 bac has not been taken in both the cases is available 
introduction in both the cases is available second if the shareholder is a domestic company domestic company is a shareholder so this is such an important note because there are so many mcqs and the case studies which are there and students make so many silly mistakes and that is the reason why this is the brahmastra kind of a note for all of you brahmastra kind of a note students now for domestic company there are two particular cases herein or may i say herein normal provision second case students is where opted for 115 bab opted for 115 bab the third case students is opted for 115 b double a are you getting this one students so if it is a normal provision whether interest deduction under section 57 available interest deduction under section 57 available so if the domestic company is a shareholder which has taken the loan and it has opted for a normal provision then the interest deduction of 57 is available what about 115 bab no deduction of interest expenditure no deduction of interest expenditure comma the dividend income the dividend income taxable at 25 point i think 168 percent no? 22 plus 10 plus 4 point 168 percent deduction now third case runs if it is if the domestic company which has taken the loan and they have opted for opted for 115 b double a opted for 115 b double a then whether the deduction of interest expenditure available under 115 b double a situation answer is yes answer is yes now let's stretch it out if you want it to be so comprehensive i'll make a comprehensive for all of you here dividend from foreign company dividend from foreign company dividend from foreign company accessible under section 115 bbd if that is a case if the dividend is received from the foreign company which is accessible under 115 bbd again students what we'll say no deduction no deduction under section 57 and the dividend income income taxable at 15% which is a special rate 15% which is a special rate whether the domestic company has opted for normal provision normal provision or 
alternate tax under section 1. This is a case. Historical notes are getting prepared, students, now for all of you. This is a historical note, students. I hope that all of you appreciate this perspective. So, if the domestic company is receiving the dividend from a foreign company, if the domestic company is receiving the dividend from a foreign company, which the which dividend is accessible under 115 BBD, the dividend which is accessible under 115 BBD, then what is the answer, students? In this context, we say no deduction of one. <coughs> <coughs> Under section 57 would be available and the dividend income would be taxable at 15% which is a special rate which is a special rate whether the domestic company has opted for normal provision or alternate tax under 115BAB or 115BAA 115BAB or 115BAA I will do it Bijal students first like the video also like the video also and please don't forget to share the video also students i'm scrolling up students have you all written this one now so what is the discussion right now the discussion is such an important discussion of mcq integrated case study wherein multiple question of this has been asked if the shareholder is individual or huf and what is that con concept that we are doing it that if that individual share an huf shareholder if they have opted for alternate tax regime of 115 BAC or they have not opted for the alternate tax regime of 115 BAC. In both the cases, students, the deduction of section 57 is available against that dividend income received by this individual shareholder. There is no embargo. There is no restriction under 115 BAC that where the shareholder wants to opt for 115 BAC, then whether the interest expenditure under section 57, will that be allowed as deduction? Yes, it will be allowed. No restriction. There are some other restrictions like family pension, the children exemption of 1032. There is other restriction which are there, but not of interest expenditure. And the next one students, is about a domestic company. If a domestic company is a shareholder and they are receiving the dividend income from another company, now this the shareholder, the domestic company which is a shareholder, they have taken the loan, they have taken the loan to purchase the shares of other company. In that particular case, students, in that particular case, the interest expenditure, in that particular case, the interest expenditure that they are getting it, that interest expenditure, will that be allowed as deduction? Various situation. Situation number one, if it is a normal provision, if it is a normal provision, students, then the interest deduction under section 57 is available. But if they have opted for 115 BAB, be careful then there is a specific restriction in 115 BAB in respect of other income, in respect of other income, 115 BAB says that we will not give any deduction on these other income and the income will be assessed directly without any deduction of expenditure. The income will be assessed directly at the rate of 25.168%. The next point students is 115 BAA. However, if it, the alternate tax regime is that of 115 BAA, if the alternate tax regime is that of 115 BAA, do we have any restriction of that sort? Answer is no. In that scenario students, the deduction of interest expenditure under 57 is available. And what if, if the dividend income is earned from a foreign company, if the dividend income is earned from a foreign company, which foreign company, that foreign company in which I hold 26% or above of the voting power, in that case, no deduction under section 57 and the dividend income will be taxable at 15% which is a special rate and the dividend income will be taxable at 15% which is a special rate whether the dividend, whether the domestic company, whether the domestic company has opted for normal provision or the alternate tax under section 115BAB or 115BAA. Whether the domestic company has opted for normal provision or alternate tax under section 115BAB or 115BAA. I hope that all of you are clear with this one. Every one of you are clear with this one now. And now, the last but not the least, students, are you aware of it? Foreign company is a shareholder. Foreign company is a shareholder. Shareholder. And say the dividend 
is received is received from from a domestic company then in that case what we will say then no deduction under section 57 is available why not available because because the dividend income because the dividend income is taxable at special rate under section 115A which is 20%. Can you see that students? It is just a very comprehensive particular notes that you have copied down students. This is just a very comprehensive note students that you have copied down. I hope that all of you are clear with this one now. Every one of you. Do you have any doubt students? Please let me know. There will not be any second chance now. All of you are clear? Full clarity? <coughs> Say students. So with that now, students, let's proceed further in this context. With that now, students, let's proceed in this context. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one. If that be so, students, if that be so, then in this scenario, students, all of you will ensure Now, students, last section is ATM. Now, ATM deduction students, if you all can see, the ATM deduction students that you all can see, this deduction is in respect of certain intercorporate dividend. I think all of you are aware of it. I think all of you are aware of it. This is the ATM deduction. Now, what if I have taken 115 BAB then? Similar exercise students for ATM. Similar exercise, deduction under section ATM. Now, this deduction is available only to a domestic company. Only to a domestic company. Isn't it? So, therefore, there is no such particular aspect about discussing about the other part. This deduction of ATM is available only to a domestic company. So, individuals and all is taken out completely from the scene. So, now in this case, the domestic company receiving the dividend receiving the dividend primarily now in this context students be careful receiving the dividend in this situation from from now from whom students it can be a foreign company, foreign company, under section 115 BBD, under section 115 BBD, is the deduction of such dividend is also available. The deduction of such dividend is also available even if
even if it is accessible under Vernon for BBD. And what about the other company? Receiving the dividend from other company? Here in the deduction is restricted up to point number one. The deduction is restricted up to point number one. Such dividend, such dividend included, such dividend received, I write like this, such dividend received and included in the GTI which will be compared with students start like this huh? the deduction is restricted up to lower of lower of what such dividend received and included in the GTI and second is the component dividend that the domestic company has distributed has distributed a month prior prior to the due date of filing the ROI. Now, truth, just one very important point because this is where you get confused. Such dividend received, please include this one during the previous year. This is the biggest particular notes that we are making at truth over here. Such dividend received during the previous year because many times what the, what the ICI does, I'll tell you through a situation. Don't worry first, you have completed or not. Just let me know that first. ICI game needs to be unfolded students otherwise you will really get into a mess in the examination day. ICI game needs to be exposed. What kind of game that they play on the questions that they draft on dividend taxation. Have you completed this for students? So the dividend is restricted up to lower of lower of what? Such dividend received during the previous year and included in the GTI and included in the GTI and this would be compared with compared with what students the dividend that the domestic company has distributed a month prior to the due date of filing of the ROI a month prior to the due date of filing of the ROI so this is precisely how the things has to be looked upon in this context I hope that all I will give you all examples but before that I hope that all of you have copied on this one all of you have copied down this one students in this context So if you all have copied on this one, students. Thank you, Bijal. Now I'll just give you an example, students, just to highlight this particular point. 
just to highlight this particular point, I am just giving one simple example. Just let's have a look whether you have understood it correctly or not. So what this ICI will do is that students, let's say for example, the other company is B limited and the shareholder is A limited. Okay, shareholder students is A limited. Now in this particular case students, now B limited primarily, please consider this, please consider this. B limited students in the case of B limited now by the way I should tell you before we go further students whether ATM deduction is it available is ATM deduction is it available students please tell me one thing whether ATM deduction is available for normal provision normal provision plus whether you have opted for 115 BAB plus whether you have opted for 115 BAA in all the case students in all the cases is this particular provision applicable or not please tell me is it applicable all of you will say yes every one of you are aware even in the case of alternate tax regime even in the case of alternate tax regime every one of you will say that yes sir 115 BAB 115 BAA even in that situation the deduction of ATM is available perfect okay now consider this consider this one once this is such an important stage that you people are in you're not aware of the importance of this particular thing so let me give a kind of an example over here and I will tell you, and this is what ICI has done in various MCQ. When you see on the day of the examination, students forget it, you can refer any case studies. And it gives a lot of headache on the day of the examination to refer the case studies and the integrated MCQs and all. But all the crux, I am putting it through this two or three page, uh, ex the charts which I am making for all of you right now. So that this becomes very clear to all of you. So <clears throat> the shareholder company, The shareholder company students is A limited. Okay, and say the other company is say B limited. Okay, now here A limited students, be careful, has taken a loan, taken a loan for investing. For investing in the shares of B Limited, and what I have said to you, the deduction under Section 57 of interest expenditure is say rupees 20,000. Just a calculation, we have done it instead of doing all the other things. So, the amount here, students, as you can see, the amount here, students, that you are receiving it, students, be careful. The different is different amount is rupees 1 lakh. Okay, now for one more last information students, which is this, that dividend of 1 lakh paid on 20th of March 2022 and dividend amount rupees 30,000 paid on 15th April 2022 <coughs> you can just write once here paid to whom paid to A limited ok paid to A limited now thereafter students here below this a limited 
as distributed dividend to its shareholder up to thirtieth of September twenty twenty two and the amount students is and the amount students is how much is the amount are you aware of that students the amount is say ninety thousand ninety thousand this is the best particular case study that you are doing it the amount is ninety thousand have you all done with this now up till here i hope that all of you are done now what will happen the deduction under section 115 sorry deduction under section atm to a limited to a limited students be careful first a limited has opted for normal provision has opted for normal provision now the next particular point is that students dividend received from b limited shrun this is such an important stage congratulations to all of you shrun dividend received from b limited included in the gti of a limited you tell me now this is such a googly let me see how many of you can answer dividend received from b limited including the gti of a limited let me see now only the things will get very clear i'll just write a bit about shrun's let me see how many of you can answer this now only we say in hindi doodh ka doodh and pani ka pani dividend received by a limited received from b limited included in the gti of a limited <coughs> and last is deduction under section atm deduction under section atm so now tell me one thing students in the first case a limited has opted for normal provision you have to tell me students how much dividend received from b limited how much dividend received from b limited is included in the gti of a limited how much dividend received from b limited is included in the gti of a limited can you tell me this students how much is the amount can you tell me this one students now please tell me if you are opting for a normal provision if you are opting for a normal provision whether a limited in this case will it be eligible to claim the deduction under section 57 will it be eligible to claim the deduction of 57 yes so it will claim a deduction of 20000 it will be eligible to claim deduction of 20000 okay now 20000 against which dividend income the two dividend which it has received first dividend received on 28th of march 2022 and second dividend it has received on 15th of april 2022 so which dividend would be it considered only the first dividend second dividend it has received after the previous year and that is the reason why students you cannot say but sir you 
but sir we know that up to the due date of up to a month before the due date of filing of the return of income needs to be considered that has to be considered for the company which is distributing the dividend for that that, that is the assessee company which wants to claim the deduction of atm the assessee company which wants to claim the deduction of atm we have to see for them how much dividend that it has distributed a month before the due date of filing of the return of income that is the upper limit and that needs to be compared with compared with the dividend that it has received during the previous year dividend that it has received during the previous year primarily and which is included in the gti so how much dividend is received during the previous year 1 lakh and out of 1 lakh of the dividend received during the previous year how much is included in the gti out of the dividend that it has received during the previous year which is rupees 1 lakh how much is included in the gti definitely you will take the deduction of 20 this 20000 also normal provision is there so 1 lakh minus 20000 which comes to 80000 in the first case okay and how much you have distributed to bijer the distribution is 90000 the distribution out to its shareholder up to 30 september is 90000 so deduction under atm is 80000 the reduction of atm is 80000 students 80000 i hope that all of you are clear with this one all of you are clear with this one students the second particular point which has been there the second particular point student which has been there is what be careful first is the a limited has opted for out provision i have told you second one students is about about what a limited has opted for has opted for 115 bwa so if a limited has opted for 115 bwa students now you tell me how we will proceed further if a limited has opted for 115 bwa students now you tell me, sorry 115 bab let's look about 115 bab now just now above in the above chart only we have concluded in the above chart only we have concluded that if you have opted for 115 bab then no deduction will be given no deduction will be given so far as section 57 is concerned no deduction will be given so far as section 57 is concerned and therefore students in this context you will not be getting a deduction 57 so simply put the dividend which is received from b limited included in the gti would be 1 lakh would be 1 lakh so here it will be 1 lakh as no deduction of 57 allowed under section 57 allowed students no deduction under section 57 allowed and therefore now how much would be the deduction in atm in atm how much would be deduction students in the atm the deduction would be 1 lakh would be compared with 90000 1 lakh would be compared with 90000 so 90000 is the amount of deduction 90000 would be the amount of deduction and you will write the balance 10000 students the balance rupees 10000 dividend at what rate it will be taxable the balance rupees 10000 dividend students at what rate it will be taxable it will be taxable at the rate of 25.168% i am giving you what you people are going to encounter in your examination dividend taxation so balance rupees 10000 will be taxable at the rate of 25.168% so this is how it has to be considered over here that is the second one and the third one students is a limited has opted for has opted for 115 bwa so all the permutation combination so here is 80000 there is no restriction in this context and the deduction also would be of 80000 the deduction also would be of 80000 the deduction also would be of 80000 <coughs> are you clear with this one students all of you are clear with this particular part students i hope that every one of you are clear with this one any doubt please let me know you will not be getting any second chance nobody is going to teach you this take it from me this is primarily two days hard work that we are consolidated or all the case study and therefore i had to do a one extension so the reason why i did that extension was this one i just needed the time to consolidate everything and this is what is the net result which i am giving you in half an hour it took me two days to do all the permutation combination and this is the net result now this is the net result now students in front of you 
एनी डाउट प्लीज डू लेट मी नो इन दैट कॉन्टेक्सट बिफोर नाउ वी विल प्रोसीड Yes, sir, this is there in the YouTube only. If you have understood this one, friends, please do like the video also and share it to all the students because you also are aware that this would be such an important discussion that we are doing this. So we are done with this one, our friends, completely. Every permutation combination, so just do this chart, three chart which I have told you, and your dividend taxation so comprehensively. You don't have to refer now any practicals. You don't have to now refer any practicals in the last month. Don't worry, I've done everything. No practicals, no case studies would be now required to be dealt with it. This is the net result of everything, students. So we are done with this dividend taxation now comp comprehensively. The next one, which has been there, alternate tax regime also, I've considered it now, students. In a way, the beauty of this discussion was that even alternate tax regime, we have ended up doing it. So now let's do finish it off the balance point of alternate tax regime, students. The main point of alternate tax regime we have done it because this is where the real confusion lies. It's not that otherwise what you do, many students are revising like this that normal provision revision they are doing of alternate tax regime. Normal provision, everyone knows it. Primary, not a big deal. But still, we'll now try to conclude even the alternate tax regime. So let's conclude this one about this one, students. Alternate tax regime, students. Let's deal with this one and conclude to this one, students. I'll first check the company because company is what we have discussed just now. Students, only two alternate tax regime you have to consider it. One one for BAB and one one for BAA. Recent trend of these sections are like this: that the ICI is targeting these sections in the question number one itself. That is the total income question. I think all of you are aware of it. The recent trend is like this: that the ICI is targeting this in the total income question itself. I think all of you are aware of this one also, isn't it? So this is, has become a recent trend. No worries. The difficult part I've already have taken out from this. We have discussed in that dividend taxation. The difficult part is already over. So the remaining part, let's start to deal with it. Uh, the rate, as you know, students for one one five BAB, students for one one five BAB, there is three rates. Always re re revise like this. For one one five BAB, there is a three rate. First, you have to see if there is in the computation of income, as per one one five BAB, in the computation of income as per one one five BAB. Please do check out if there is any special income, because if there is any special income, then that special income will be charged to tax at the special rate. If there is any special income, then that particular income will be charged to tax at the special rate. We know on the special rate now. Now, other than that, now be careful what I'm saying. Ah, huh? be careful what I'm saying. Other than that, the income which is which is derived from manufacturing. Income which is derived from manufacturing, or income which is incidental to the activity of manufacturing, that income will be taxed. The second rate is seventeen point one six percent. That income will be taxed at seventeen point one six percent. Which income? Again, repeat with me loudly. Apart from the special rate income, if 
the income which is derived from the manufacturing or the income which is incidental to the manufacturing that income will be taxed at the rate of 17.16% which is the rate for 115 BAB including the surcharge and HEC of 10% and 44% respectively so the effective rate becomes 17.16 isn't it now students be careful this 17.16% which is the second rate is to be made applicable 17.16% students is to be made applicable to the two income which are those two income the income which is derived from and the income which is derived from manufacturing and the second one is the income which is incidental to the manufacturing now the incidental income i can give you couple of examples friends please very importantly take a note of it and what is that example friends you should be aware of that that example students is that if supposingly students i have put up i have furnished a bank guarantee i have furnished a bank guarantee to obtain the business and on that bank guarantee deposit there is an interest income on that bank guarantee deposit there is an interest income then all of you are aware that there is a judgment of a of the delhi high court in k and co which has said that the interest income on the bank deposit the interest income on the bank deposit that will be taxable the interest income on the bank deposit amount will be taxable under the head pgbp because this is incidental to this is incidental to your business so therefore in, if that is the income which the company has earned the manufacturing company has earned and the manufacturing company has opted for 115 bab then that interest income students then that interest income please tell me one thing will that be accessible will that be accessible at the rate of 17.16% answer is yes because this is incidental to the manufacturing business incidental to the manufacturing business now the second example students is the second example students is the export incentives the export incentive students even the export incentive students which are there are incidental income as well they are also an incidental income so if there is an export incentive which is also considered as an incidental income even that will be accessible at the concessional rate of 70 uh, that will be accessible at the rate of 17.16% because that is also an incidental income now if you allow me students i will tell you one very important comparative point these two incidental income are accessible at 17.16% meaning thereby they are getting the benefit of they are getting the benefit of the concessional rate of 115 bab which is 17.16% the reason is clear that the the rate of 17 17.16% has to be applied on applied on the two income which is that the income which is derived from the manufacturing business or the income which is incidental to the manufacturing business so both these income will be subject to the rate of 115 bab and that rate would be students at the rate would be students at what is the rate students indeed at 17.16 percent but let me give you a parallel over here students let me give you a parallel over here and the parallel is if you remember the profit link deduction in the profit link deduction students while we calculate the qualifying amount of profit on which the deduction will be computed while we calculate the qualifying amount of profit on which the deduction will be calculated students in that only the profit which is derived from only the profit which is derived from the business that profit will be subject to only the profit which is derived from that profit only will be subject to subject to the deduction under profit link deduction provisions so please always keep this comparison in mind because while we compute the profit the qualifying amount of profit on which the deduction will be calculated then the qualifying amount of profit is restricted the qualifying amount of profit is will be restricted students will be restricted only in respect of only in respect of only in respect of what students only in respect of the profit which is derived whereas here for 115 bab the 
rate of 17.16 percent will be applied on two incomes and which is the two income the income which is derived from manufacturing business and the income which is incidental to the manufacturing business in both the cases the 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 profit uh, the 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 income will be subject to the rate of 17.16 percent the income will be subject to the rate of 17.16 percent So this is my second rate, the second rate in 115 BAB. So what was the first rate? I told you there are three rates. So the first rate happens to be the rate of the special rate of tax. If in the income, if in the total income computed as per 115 BAB, if there is, if there is any special income, then that special income will be taxed at the special rate. Then the second category is the income which is derived from manufacturing business or the income which is incidental to the manufacturing business on that on that the rate of 17.16 percent will be applied and the third case students happens to be what is the third case students the third case is neither the first nor the second neither first nor the second so other income so the third case is known as other income just now we we have referred that example of different taxation so a dividend income received by this company, which is which has opted for 115 BAB, if it has received a dividend income, then that dividend income students will be taxable without any deduction at the rate of 25.168%. We have just now referred that example, isn't it? So that will be taxable at the rate of 25.168%. So the other income other than 1 and 2 will be taxed at 25.168% without any deduction but when you talk about 115b double a students there are only two rates when you talk about 115b double a students there are only two rates which are those two rates so in 115b double a students you have to see if there is any special income which is taxable at a special rate so in the total income computed as per 115b double a in the total income computed as per 115b double a is there any special income is there any special income students is there any special income which is taxed at the special rate is there any special income which is taxed at the special rate if that is the case then that income will be taxed at the special rate and the balance total income and the balance total income including the other income the balance total income including the other income will be taxed at the rate of 25.168 percent will be taxed at the rate of 25.168 percent will there be a deduction of the expenditure yes subject to the prohibition which is given in this section but there is no restriction otherwise as far as the deduction of the expenditure is concerned so always compare it like this 115 bab three rates and 115 bab a two rates in 115 bab for the other income the third category of the rate the for other income the rate which is not what is other income which is not covered in one and two above then the other income will be taxed at 25.168% and without any deduction of the expenditure. Keep this particular point in mind. Thereafter, students, rest of it, students, I think all of you are aware, conditions, I think every one of you are aware of this one. This manufacturing business. Now, only one point, students, as far as the manufacturing business is concerned, the important point to be considered over here is this that manufacturing excludes something over here. Are you aware of that, students? The manufacturing, the term manufacturing students has certain exclusion in this case. So this is the exclusion which has been given to us. The business of manufacture or production of any article or thing shall not include the business of development of computer software in any form of media, mining, conversion of marble block, a similar item of slab, bottling, gas, cylinder, printing of books also is excluded students or production of cinema films. Printing of books or even the production of cinema films, these are considered as a case of the exclusions. These are considered as a case of the exclusion students. So, accordingly, students, in this context, these are considered as a case of the exclusion. So, it shall not include the following. So, that is the exclusions which are being given over here, and that exactly how the things are to be looked upon. I hope that all of you are clear with this. All of you are clear with this one, students. So these are the exclusion students, which are being there. Now be careful, huh? 
This exclusion is only restricted to 115 BAB. This is only for 115 BAB. Please don't stretch it to the additional depreciation because many students are having the habit like supposingly if a company is in the printing of books okay and it has not opted for 115 BAB it has not opted for 115 BAB and the company is in printing of books and during the previous year it has purchased a new plant and mastery in the new plant and mastery students so will it be eligible for an additional depreciation under section 3212A Will it be eligible for additional depreciation under section 3212A? Why not? Answer is yes. It will be eligible for additional depreciation under section 3212A. So the additional depreciation students under section 3212A is available in this regard because this exclusion of manufacturing is only for the purpose of 115 BAB. Apart from that students, the condition, I think I, I will not run through it because every one of you are aware of it. Because this, what kind of, the reg, it should be set up and registered on or after 1st October 2019. Everyone, you can just run through this. Now, obviously, students, whether it is 115 BAB or 115 BAA, they need to forego some big deductions. Even that list is known to you, which are the big deductions which needs to be foregone. However, only point that needs to be considered over here is this too. Over here is this too. Otherwise, rest of it, all of you are aware of it, students in this context. So, these two are the important points which is to be considered. Students, be careful of this one. So, in this context, students, be very careful of this one. Students, if that company, say for example, it's a manufacturing company and it has opted for 115 BAB and that company has incurred revenue expenditure on scientific research and the capital expenditure on scientific research during the previous year. That company has incurred a revenue expenditure on scientific research and a capital expenditure on scientific research. Then in respect of those revenue and the capital expenditure on the scientific research, will they be eligible for deduction? Will they be eligible for a deduction? To that the answer is yes. Because please can you see this one here? So what is excluded means 3511 and 30 which is revenue expenditure. And 3514, which is the capital expenditure, these two are excluded in the negative list, from the negative list. If these two are excluded from the negative list, it implies that the deduction for revenue expenditure on scientific research and the deduction for the capital expenditure on scientific research is very much allowed. The second one, just now we have discussed, ATWJAA and ATM deduction, is that also allowed? And the answer is yes. ATWJAA and ATM is that deduction also not and the answer is yes. Students be very careful on this they have targeted once this point number three. These people have targeted once in one of the question. Students the additional depreciation definitely is not allowed. We all are aware. The additional depreciations are not allowed if you have opted for 115 BAB or you have opted for 115 BAA as the case may be. You will not be getting the additional depreciation. <laughs> For sure. And the normal rate of depreciation students is at 40%. And the normal rate of depreciation also cannot exceed beyond 40%. Why we are focusing on that 40% students? Because say for example students, I am a company and I have opted for 115 BAA. I am a company and I have opted for 115 BAA. And there is a block of 45% of a motor vehicle. Students remember there is a block of block of of 45% for a motor vehicle. That motor vehicle which I have purchased, this was a period, if you all remember that, of uh, 2019, 23rd August 2019 to 31st of March 2020. During this period, I have purchased the motor vehicle and I have put to use during the same period. So, any particular motor vehicle which I have purchased during the period of 23rd of August 2019 to 31st of March 2020 and it has been put to use during the same period. What is the rate of depreciation for such motor vehicle? A normal case. It is, it is students in this context, it can go to 15 plus 15. In this context, they can also go to 45%. If it is like a company, like for example, it's an Ola company or a company which is engaged in the running of, uh, running of uh, these things. The company which is engaged in running of the goods or the passenger transport. So for these companies, the rate of depreciation can go to 45%.
but if you have opted for the alternate tax regime then in that case the maximum rate of depreciation the normal rate of depreciation also cannot go beyond 40 percent just keep that in mind in one of the attempt they have targeted wherein they have given that uh, for one of the block the rate is 45 percent so what you have to say that if you have opted for 115 bab or 115 bwa then the normal rate of depreciation also will not exceed beyond 40 percent will not exceed beyond 40 percent so that is a special point that you should keep in mind and the last point students is this that students see for 115 bab there is no issue in the very first year of the incorporation of the company in the very first year of the incorporation of the company students you need to take up take a call and the call has to be this that the company needs to decide whether it wants to in the very first year of the incorporation of the company the company needs to decide whether it wants to go for 115 bab or it has to go with the normal provision so that is what it is and there is no second chance huh? be careful students there is no second chance on this the very first year they need to in fact take a call on that now this is a very peculiar thing why this is important because see for 115 bab company in the very first year itself they need to take a call whereas for 115 if a company who wants to go with 115 bwa there is no compulsion there is no compulsion at any given point of time it can opt in for 115 bwa but yes that is for sure that once you have opt in to 115 bwa then there cannot be opt out once you have opt in for 115 bwa then there cannot be an opt out is that clear to all of you this is what it is for 115 bwa for 115 bwa bab also same thing once you have opt in in the first year you have decided that you will go with 115 bab then you cannot opt out why this is important because we will discuss for individual what is the situation for opting in and opting out we'll be discussing for individual what is the situation for opting in and opting out so students what can happen say for example i am an existing company and i have so far has availed normal provision and i have so far i have availed the normal provision so students there is a lot of mat credit which is available there is a lot of mat credit which is available now one thing is for sure once you opt for 115 bwa the company will not be subject to mat the company will not be subject to mat same is also for 115 bab if you have opted for 115 bab then the company is not subject to a mat so therefore there will not be any question of mat credit isn't it so if supposingly if i am an existing company and up till now i have opted for a normal provision and therefore i have got lot of mat credit at my disposal i should be looking for utilizing my mat credit against the against my normal income i should be looking for utilizing my mat credit against against this the normal tax so i should not opt for 115 bwa till the time i have utilized my mat credit i should not be opting for 115 bwa till the time i have utilized my mat credit that is as a principle i should be very clear on this and the second one students would be that once the mat credit is been exhausted thereafter it should be then then i can opt for 115 bwa that is possible this is the first special point there is one more special point which is about the brought forward losses now students supposingly i am an existing company and i have got a brought forward losses and the unabsorbed depreciation and in that brought forward losses and in that unabsorbed depreciation there lies or there is the element of that portion of loss or that portion of unabsorbed depreciation which in the in the option of 115 bwa b or the option of 115 bwa this is a considered as a negative item meaning thereby say for example say for example students there is an additional depreciation which is remaining unabsorbed or for that matter students i have taken a deduction i have taken a deduction students of say for example of donation to national laboratory donation to national laboratory for which i have taken a deduction of section 35 now when i opt for 115 bab or i opt for 115 bwa then that donation which i then i don't get deduction of that donation so therefore in my earlier years when i have given the donation for national laboratory i took a deduction when i was opting for the normal provision and because i never had sufficient profit in that year that deduction of section 35 in respect of donation to national laboratory that deduction remain unabsorbed and it is forming a part of my business loss the business loss which i have brought forward 
Now, if that business loss which I have brought forward in the current year, I am opting for 115BAA, I am opting for 115BAA, then the portion of business loss, the portion of business loss which represent, which represents the block deduction, the portion of business loss which represents the block deduction, that portion will get lapsed. So, on the broad forward business loss and the UAD will not constitute the portion of block deductions which remain unabsorbed in the earlier year. So, that much portion will get lapsed once you opt for 115BAA. Once you opt for 115BAA. Obviously, we will not say about 115BAB because in 115BAB in the very first year itself, this option needs to be taken. In 115BAB in the very first year, this option needs to be taken. I hope that all of you are clear with this one. And the last special point is this one, students. Be careful on this part, huh, students. In fact, in fact, I should revise this thing. There are, here in students, there are four special rate. There are four special rate for 115BAB. There are four special rate for 115BAB, students. So, the rates which are there for, in fact, please make this particular part. This is such an important state that you are in. <clears throat> the rates which are being there rates for so if you have opted for 115 BAB Or you have opted for 115 BAA. The first is the special income. The special income at special rate. The second one runs is income derived from manufacturing or incidental to manufacturing income which is derived from manufacturing or incidental to manufacturing so, this income students derived from manufacturing or incidental to manufacturing students, this income would be at 17.16%. Now, here students, right here, plus 10% surcharge plus 4% HEC. Because that loading is obvious, always has to be there. Third one students, the third one students is about other income other than one and two no deduction of any expenditure and the fourth rate students just before let's hold on students the fourth income is income In the bracket, right? More than ordinary arising to the company
from a transaction from a transaction with person with person having close having close connection the rate is from just a second rate is so you can write here such excess profit will be taxable at the rate of 34 point what is the rate 34 point 32 34.32 and for 115 double insurance special income at special rate plus 10 percent surcharge plus 4 percent HEC and the second one runs the balance total income would be would be at this is the difference this is the difference friends do like the video and do share this video this is such an important particular session that is there in this context Clear with this one, North Friends? So there are four rates for 115 BAB, and then there are two rates, students, for this particular context. Is that clear to all of you, students? So now on the day of the examination, what is that other that you are going to revise, students? So apart from the rate, students, you will revise herein that particular case of revision, students, the deduction. <coughs> two big deduction allowed which are those two big deduction allowed 3511 3514 and the second one is 80 double and ATM apart from this ones what else you need to revise revise about the mat credit for Math credit for 115 BAA. And the last thing to be revised is the broad forward business loss and UAD deduction for 115 BAA. This two additional concepts, what I just now discussed. So, math credit, what I have told you, students. Mat credit for, I will say, mat credit for existing companies. For existing company. What is the way forward? What is the way forward? And the broad forward business loss and UAD deduction. When the company... Opts for one one five B double A. This is the revision point. Your alternate tax regime is over. Congratulations, students. Congratulations. So this is the other revision point. This is the other revision point, students.
this is the other revision point other revision point <coughs> this is the other revision point if you all are through with this one students this covers your alternate tax regime for the company congratulations students again i'm repeating the same thing with that now students if you all are through with this if you all are through with this one students we now come towards for individual students individual students primarily which has been there over here i've already have discussed this particular part only thing students i just need to discuss others are clear over here others are clear over here friends tell me one thing for individual in fact this if you remember i have discussed this particular point when i was doing house property revision at that stage i have discussed this particular point the point when i was doing the house property revision video students say for example students if i am an individual and from individual i have got a lop unit there are two lop units please be careful i am an individual and i have opted for 115 bac i am an individual and i have opted for 115 bac now i have got lop1 and lop2 now in lop1 there is a loss of 3 lakhs lop2 students there is a profit of 2 lakhs is this set off allowed <coughs> is this set off allowed students many students are asking sir how come there would be a loss how come there would be a loss why not interest deduction is it allowed or not interest deduction is it allowed or not students answer is yes so interest deduction will be allowed students in this regard so since interest deduction is allowed so that way there could be a loss and for an lop unit or dlop unit the deduction of interest expenditure is unlimited for the lop unit or a dlop unit the deduction of interest expenditure is unlimited and that is the reason why students there could be a loss in this of this magnitude of 3 lakhs but is this first of all if it is an lop unit is the interest deduction is allowed answer is yes if it is an sop unit students if it is an sop unit and i have opted for the alternate tax regime of 115 bac I have opted for the alternate tax regime of 115 BAC. Then, in that particular case, whether the interest deduction will it be allowed? No. The interest deduction will not be allowed. So there will not be any question of deduction of the interest expenditure in this case. SOP unit, yes, it is allowed. And so LOP unit, yes, it is allowed. SOP unit, no, it is not allowed. So as far as 115 BAC is concerned, students, it effectively will become. it effectively students will become a case for for the this one effectively will become the case for sop income would be nil lop or dlop unit there would be an amount and if from the lop and dlop if the net result is negative like in my case the net result is negative 1 lakh the net result huh? why i am using the word net result because if the deduction is allowed for interest expenditure and after deduction i will do an intrahead set off i will do an intrahead set off and after that if my net result if my net result is negative therefore this point number 2 will come into play and what the point number 2 says that if you have opted for 115 bac then this particular 1 lakh will get lapsed 1 lakh will get lapsed students can i get a standard deduction if i have taken a house property will i be getting a standard deduction answer is yes the standard deduction of section 24 30% of the nav will it be allowed answer is yes but what if in the case of salary standard deduction of 50000 is that allowed no standard deduction of 50000 is it allowed answer is no so therefore here if you see standard deduction of 50000 is not allowed and for ifos the standard deduction for family pension standard deduction for family pension which is 1/3 or rupees 15000 whichever is lower one third of the family pension amount or rupees 15000 whichever is lower that standard deduction is not allowed 
if you have opted for 115 BAC. That standard deduction is not allowed if you have opted for 115 BAC. Rest of it, point students are the same. Here in chapter 6A students, here in chapter 6A where the individual has opted for 115 BAC, they will be getting 80 double double deduction, yes. What about ATM? ATM is only for a company, so therefore individual cannot take ATM deduction. So, 80 double double deduction, they will get it. Apart from 80 double double deduction students, whatever is the employer contribution to the NPS for which they get the additional deduction under 80 CCD subsection 2, whatever is the employer contribution in 80, not their own contribution, their own contribution is in 80 C. But the employer contribution is governed in 80 CCD subsection 2, that employer contribution, that 50,000 amount extra, that will be eligible for deduction even if I have opted for 115 BAC. Even if I have opted for 115 BAC. So this is a special point only to be considered apart from that students. Rest of the things are same. Rest of the things are same as we have discussed in the case of company. The block deductions and all. Now the other particular point. Now other particular point is about one. Just hold on students. Other particular point. Before I do other particular point. Let me tell, tell you one important thing. <coughs> students. 115 BAV and 115 BAA is applicable only in the case of a domestic company. 115 BAB and 115 BAA is applicable only in respect of a domestic company. Whereas 115 BAC, is it applicable for any company? 115 BAC, is it applicable for resident and non-resident individual? 115 BAC, is it applicable for a resident and a non-resident individual? To that, the answer is yes. To that the answer is yes students so it is applicable in this regard students to both in this regard students so just be very careful on this particular point just be very careful on this particular point i hope that every one of you every one of you students are clear with this one clear with this one students and that exactly is the point so students, this is how the things has to be looked upon in this context this is how it has to be looked upon students in this context so with this now, students, with this now we will proceed further in this context. So NR individual or a resident individual, NR individual or a resident individual, both of them, both of them students will be eligible for this particular benefit of 115 BAC. Both of them will be applicable for the benefit of 115 BAC. Now the tax rate students, the slab rate, I think all of you are aware of it. Every two and a half lakhs, the slab rate is increasing by 5%. Up to two and a half lakhs, nothing. Now, every two and a half lakhs. Now, students, if you are a senior citizen, then a senior citizen, just these are the tricky points. These are tricky points, students. If you are a senior citizen and you have opted for 115 BAC, will your slab will it increase? Will your slab, students, will it increase, students? Answer is no. Your slab will not be increasing to three lakhs. Don't consider that now your slab will increase to 3 lakhs nothing of that sort is going to happen once you have opted for 115 BAC your slab will remain the same okay resident or non-resident the slab will remain the same one beauty of this one is that if you are a resident if you are a resident student and you have opted for opted for 115 BAC then in this case you will be eligible for a rebate of 87A then in this case, you will be eligible for a rebate of 87A students. That is what it is in this context. Just keep that in mind. Huh? So if you are a rebate, you will be getting the rebate of section students 115. Uh, you will be getting the rebate of 87A. And I think all of you are aware of what that rebate is the same case. <coughs> now, if there is any special income, if in the total income, which the individual has computed as per 115 BAC, if there is any students those who have just joined in i will just tell you one thing we have done a very important discussion of the dividend taxation with a lot of important case study which you find it in the mcq and the integrated case study i have made four slides after the discussion you will have to refer that and one alternate tax regime for the company also i have done very important discussion just before that so just do ensure after the lecture gets over do go through the same very important and do like the video also and share with all of your friends Without failure, students, this is such an important session that we are in right now. So, students, in this context, if you all see over here, 
what I was talking, if the total income computed by the individual under 115 BAC, if that total income has, if that total income students has any special income which is charged to tax at a special rate of tax, any special income which is charged to tax at a special rate of tax, then in that particular case, whether that particular special income chargeable to a special rate of tax, chargeable to a special rate of tax students, will be chargeable even if it is opted for 115 BAC. Yes, the way we have discussed for the alternate tax regime for the company, same it will happen over here also. And the balance total income, balance total income will be taxed at the slab rate which has been given it above here. So that is what it is. We have discussed this. Other points also now we have discussed. Last point students in the case of individual taxation is this one. Last point. This is the point. Students, just we have discussed as to how the opt-in will work. Opt-in will work for 115 BAB, how the opt-in will work for 115 BAA. Uh, we have discussed that. One thing is very clear that there is no opt-out. There is no opt-out from 115 BA, BAB or 115 BAA. So, once you have opted in, there is no opt-out provision from 115 BAB or 115 BAA. But in the case of individual students, in the case of individual, there is a peculiar situation that arises. And please have a look to what is this peculiar position. Students here, if supposingly the individual who is there, he does not have any business income. If the individual who is there, he does not have a business income, then in that case, every year it will have, every year students, it will have the option of opt-in and opt-out. Which they will decide every year whether he, they want to go for 115 EAC or, or the normal provision. Every year they will have this particular have this particular provision applicable. Whereas if the individual students, if the individual does not has got a business income, then they will have opt out. Once they have opted in for 115 BAC, once they have opted in for 115 BAC, they will have once in their lifetime the option to opt out. They will have once in their lifetime the option to opt out. So only once they can opt out students in this case. Please understand 115 BAB and 115 BAA. Once you opt in, there can never be an opt out. Once you opt in, there can never be an opt out. But for individual students, when they have got a business income, then they have, once they have opted in for 115 BAC, once in their lifetime, they can opt out. This exactly is the point, students. And one question is there in the chart. If you all want to go through the same, please do the same. And that is what alternate tax regime is all about. We have revised this particular point with all the key particular features, students. And the next particular session which I'm going to have with all of you in the chart revision. Now, students, we are at the end of our chart revision also. So, next session I will do mat with all of you. And the request from the students is all the capital gains front also. I'll deal with that as well. And we will close our chart sessions once and for all. Okay. But this session is one of the most important sessions. I will tell you, students, just go through them. Those who have just joined in, for all of them, I've done a very important discussion on the dividend taxation, specifically that 57 ATM and various permutation combination, which are covered by the ICI in their MCQ and the integrated case study. Everything I've been, I've covered it over here. So that is what, students, it is <coughs> in this context. And, and the alternate tax regime, various situation, permutation combination, we have considered everything, students. So do go through them without fail. That is my humble suggestion to all of you, those who have just joined in for this particular lecture. Absolutely uh, important particular area so far as your examinations are concerned. Students, very quickly, <coughs> I'll tell you about this particular part. Students, our subscription plan for the Iconic, the Iconic subscription students, as you all are aware, this is a a plus first the plus subscription students the plus subscription which you can all see is a subscription plan which we have got it wherein students do ensure to tell to all your friend those who have got their attempt due in november 2022 now even there is a three month subscription so do ensure that if they have got one subject left pending they can do it from this particular platform itself or six month subscription or a one year subscription as the case maybe which you all can see over here depending upon if their attempt is normal 22 or may 23 normal 23 but one point that they will tell to you you should be telling to them is that in the referral code you have to put the code cads so that they can get the discount of 10 percent outright they can get a discount of 10 percent outright 
Iconic subscription is one of the flagship program students for the academy, wherein the students are being given the textbooks and all. Students are also being provided with the other facility like there is a mentor which is provided for the students. Round the clock dot solving facilities are being provided. So these are the features which are there for the iconic program, which is there in the academy. And for that students, 12 months, 24 and 36 months subscription plan is given. Again, the same thing students, when they do it, they will do it primarily, uh, as I told you, referral code has been given. Referral code of CADS is what you need to put up to get a 10% discount. Even in the iconic, it is applicable students. The code CADS works even in the iconic. Now students, you can see the kind of the pricing also, it's so economical because if you see 28,500 for the entire group with the host of feature, including test series, there is a graded test series program, 40, 60 and 100. So with that kind of a feature also, primarily at this pricing students, you can just imagine students, the kind of the leverage our students can get it from this platform. So this is one of the point, iconic is what students, combo is also there. Combo facility is also there if they have to opt for both the groups, students, the same can be facilitated by opting for the same. The pricing definitely is a bit higher. Obviously, there it has to be. But the combo subscription plan are also there for both iconic as well as press subscription. So, students, with this, students, I'm concluding the today's session. Those who have just joined in, again, I'm repeating this point. They You need to watch this video without fail, especially the dividend taxation and alternate tax regime, the dividend taxation wherein I have covered everything about 57 ATM, everything about 57 ATM. Students, all the case studies of the ICI and integrated MCQs, everything has been covered it from this particular uh, particular class itself. So, do, do it without fail.